Oh, Albert Gore has lost his mind and in turn lost the argument on climate change. He heartlessly and inexplicably tried to use the Uvalde tragedy to score some cheap political points. And it was as disgusting as it sounds. You know, the climate deniers uh, uh, are really in some ways similar to all of those uh, almost 400 law enforcement officers in Uvalde, Texas, who were waiting outside an unlocked door uh, while the children were being massacred. They heard the screams, they heard the gunshots, and uh, nobody stepped forward. So Joe Biden isn't the only former vice president experiencing public cognitive decline. So Gore somehow thought re-traumatizing the poor families who lost their babies would get them to all buy Teslas? How grotesque, how disgusting. This kind of salacious, overly emotional fear-mongering, it doesn't change minds. It just demonstrates the speaker has lost his. Gore then went on to moan about the lack of congressional action, but beating skeptical lawmakers into submission with flimsy arguments has diminishing returns. Instead of assuming anyone who doesn't fully embrace fanatical climate orthodoxy is a murderous denier, why not assume people want to save the planet? They just don't want to do so with, by destroying their livelihoods and the economy in the process. Prince Albert talks about climate deniers. When it's not clean energy they fear, it's climate radicals' dirty politics. Gore has torched so many straw men, they're likely to spark wildfires in California. And then he has the gooey nards to say the climate crisis shouldn't be a political football. He is indeed the Tom Brady of planetary hysteria. We've seen all sorts of unimpressive stunts from unwell green activists who've taken to slashing tires, shutting down freeways, and gluing themselves to priceless works of art in international galleries. Why don't they kill two birds with one stone and glue themselves to private planes of do-gooders and hypocrites like Albert Gore, Harry and Meghan, and John Kerry? That's one airlift that might get some attention. And these climate kooks could finally get a 20,000-foot view of an issue they have clearly overblown. And that's the memo. <laughs> Al Gore isn't the only one preaching this stuff. One CNN columnist says, it's time to cut back on the air conditioning to save the planet. He wrote an opinion piece titled, A Very European Answer to Air Conditioning. Newsflash, it's over 100 degrees in some places, and this ain't Europe. Will Al Gore and his climate comrades ever go away? The party panel is back. Stephen L. Miller, Richard Fowler, and Olivia Rondeau. Um, so not only was this disgusting, Stephen, Al Gore has been wrong about almost everything. Yeah, I mean, Man Bear Pig is competing for shock attention with a scoldy Swedish teenager and, like you said, people gluing their faces to the Mona Lisa. So it doesn't shock me that he had kind of went down this road. Uh, but you're talking about a guy who, he seems out of his depth talking about, like he's searching for the most shocking thing that he could find reading Twitter and he just kind of loses the point. And, you know, this is a guy who, you know, in 2007 in his film and accepting a Nobel Peace Prize and in speeches said that the polar ice caps would be gone by 2013. Um, as far as the climate emergency, look, I think a lot of us will sympathize with that when these people lecturing us start acting like it. When President Biden flies an hour and a half to give a climate speech that he could have given over Zoom at the White House. And people see this stuff and it just kind of makes everyone roll their eyes. They are their own worst enemies. And Richard, they are very dishonest about some of the facts when they talk about the climate. And, you know, stop treating people as though they hate the planet Earth and they want it all to just go to hell in a smoking mass. They don't. People want clean air. They want beautiful vistas. They really want all of that. But they've also been lied to that the only way to have clean, non-carbon emitting energy sources is through windmills and solar farms. That's not the case. Uh, thorium nuclear energy in this country is possible. Uh, we should have been exploring the technology decades ago, and that would power entire grids while making the earth cleaner and sweeter. Why are they lying about that? Listen, I think there's a couple things here. I think number one, I think if you talk to business leaders, right, if like the former, the, the current president, J.P. Morgan, gave a speech not too long ago, and he talked about the both and approach, the idea that we can have cleaner forms of energy, and at the same time, we can also find a way to slowly but surely 
tick down on fossil fuel. And I think we have to do both those at the same time. I think the ideal of comparing, you know, climate deniers to what happened to the Uvalde students is actually rather despicable. But I think the broader issue here is how do we work on dealing with the fact that our climate is actually getting hotter, right? And we see this by the fact that we are, most of America is under a heat wave right now because that same thing. We have these super storms, we have European heat waves, we have yeah, but it's also hotter than normal this July than any other July, but I digress. We also are dealing with droughts and various other things, which means there's work that we can do together to make sure that the planet does not go into a, a carnal abyss. All right, but stop it with the language like that. Olivia, this is the thing that drives me crazy. You can have a rational discussion about all of this stuff. Uh, you can be honest about what some of the solutions are, and the solution isn't give up AC entirely so you smell like a hobo's ass. Uh, the solution can be, you know, maybe we allow companies to invent new things that make AC a, a little bit more hospitable to the environment. But, you know, this atrocious activism is getting downright violent. Exactly, Kennedy. And these uh, extremists are acting like it's kind of a religion, like the whole quote unquote climate change denier thing. It sounds like a religious person calling someone blasphemous or heretic, like no mm -hmm. one cares. Um, it's, it really sounds, it's starting to sound like a cult. And when people like Al Gore, who I honestly, like he's not even relevant anymore. I don't know why he said this. I guess to gain some sort of relevance. <laughs> but when people like Al Gore compare this to really, really horrible tragedies like mass shootings at elementary schools, I also find that disgusting. And um, why aren't we talking about like the violent left and the violent extremist climate climate change climate change believers? I guess is what they would say, um, who are like uh, chaining themselves to doors and gluing themselves to the Starbucks counters and laying in the middle of the road. Like I don't know why we're not talking about that. <laughs> Let him let him lie down. That's fine. Um, I saw Varsity Blues.